Hello, my friends. I bet you didn't expect to see me again. If it's a hit or miss, you tell me, okay? Do I look like a, a little girl who just needs to grow up? I think they're kind of cute, but they're like definitely uneven. And you know me. I'm literally always sweating. So, <laughs> I have some books that I want to talk to you guys about. This year, I want to be a lot more persistent and consistent and dedicated and committed to reading more. Last year, I failed. I literally failed. I think I started picking back up reading like two months before the year was over. Sadly, I don't have too, too many books, but that's good because I feel like if the list is a little bit smaller, it'll be easier for you to pick a book you might want to read. It's the new beginning. It's, I'm kidding. We decided that our new year is starting in March, so. I don't know if I want to wear these little things in my hair. If they distract you, I apologize. Hi, um, if you have never seen me before in your life, my name is Sarah and I make YouTube videos. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Something that I wanted to do differently is Usually I just tell you guys about the books that I read and I enjoyed, but I have a couple books that I could not get hooked onto to save my life. And so I wanted to share them with you guys just in case you may have read it and you're just like, girl, just push through the first couple chapters. It's going to get better. Or if you might feel the same way and you're like, dang, dude, I tried to read that book too and I just had to keep putting it down. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the first book that I have that I think is absolutely amazing it's life-changing, and it's cool because it's a, it's a short read, but it's so dense with information, at least in my opinion, that I've never read before, that my brain gets tired after reading just a couple paragraphs. So this is called The Living Earth Manual of Feng Shui by Stephen Skinner, Chinese geomancy. So I got this at a little, you know, like funny store. It was really cheap too, it was only four bucks. But basically, this is the perfect... Alright, so, the notion of feng shui. If you've never really heard about that, I it's completely foreign to me, but my mom was obsessed with it. She just was, oh, nope, that's bad feng shui. Oh, feng shui. And I'm like, alright, weirdo. But now, I am bamboozled, okay? This is a perfect beginner's book to feng shui. It goes into the definitions, it talks about chi, it talks about how, y'all, this is such a good book. So feng shui is basically the notion of <clears throat> how the energy moves around both you and your living space. And what's also really interesting is it compares European slash American tradition living to the Chinese and how the Chinese flip the compass. The compass is north is where south is and south is where north is. So they perceive and live things completely differently. So it was really interesting to learn that and read this and almost hear about all of the bad feng shui that Europeans and people brought over and implemented into America. So freaking crazy, you guys. It talks about um, land forms, it talks about rivers and mountains and how we have completely messed everything up over here and kind of all over the place based off of our ignorance towards energy and how it works. Yeah, I love it. It really goes into how we in Western society are way more obsessed with just getting buildings up. They can be just tall, square, rectangular buildings right next to each other. And it was talking about how bad of energy it brings to have houses that are all shaped the same and um, at the same level of rooftops. Um, yeah, it goes into how horrible power lines are, not just the, obviously, what they emit, but how they are just completely straight. It's so interesting, you guys. I feel like, like I said, it's such a dense book, so I can't even describe half of what is really talked about in here. But something that I also found really, really interesting, kind of like a little synchronicity, um, I have been studying so much about, like, old history, what really was going on, and I, I haven't really talked about it too, too much, but... One YouTuber that I will highly, 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 highly recommend is Michelle Gibson. She is so flippin' smart. The work and the dedication she puts into every single video she makes is just... I don't... I don't... 
I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. But she talks about ley lines and how um, there's all these coordinates that line up perfectly with one another and it's really, really interesting. And they brought up ley lines and how dangerous ley lines. It's just, I really, really recommend this book, you guys. Especially if you just feel kind of uncomfortable with your living situation. Say you just moved into an apartment and you don't really know, like, why do things feel off? Maybe you feel off in your neighborhood or when you go down a certain sidewalk. It's just really interesting. Highly recommend this, you guys. Highly recommend Michelle Gibson's channel. I watch her. I probably watch her videos all the time. I fall asleep to her videos because I like how her facts and the information she speaks parallels with my dreams, if that makes sense. So it's like I will fall asleep listening to one of her videos and then I like wake up in my dream at the location she was talking about. And then I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> Let's go, Michelle. But um, yes, so I think that, yeah, her channel plus this is going to introduce you into, um, it's not even like a rabbit hole, it's more so of a, I don't know anything. <laughs> and I don't think anybody else does too. Meaning like about the world and our history, energy, that type of goofy stuff. So my next book, this book has a really, really cool story behind it because a, a while ago, like I'm talking last March maybe, I swear I wrote in here. Okay, so December 26th of 2021. Oh, I'm over here thinking I read it last year. So I finished January 3rd, 2022. Um, so, crazy story. I had too many books, right? Like, just too many books. And sometimes, like Function will tell you, books carry some energy itself. So having all of this knowledge around and just sitting there, I, I wanted to kind of give it away. So I got this big box and I put all these random books in it that I haven't read that I've had for a really long time to go put in a free library. So I'm sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, and I don't know why, you guys, but there's something, like, calling me from the box. Like, I just feel this, like, magnet pulling me and saying, like, yo, come here, Sarah, come here. So I get up, right? I go over to the box, and I'm kind of, like, looking through. I have to, like, go through a couple books, and something tells me to just pick this book up. I got this book off of Amazon probably like the year I started YouTube looking up really scary creepy books, right? I wanted to like, what is the most creepiest book in the world? And Johnny Got His Gun was one. And I just put it on my list. I was kind of hesitant about reading it because I was worried it would be based on war. I was worried it would just be about guns and stuff and that's just not really my cup of tea when it comes to being scared. So I never read this book. As you can see though, there's so many sticky notes. So whoever Leslie Jensen is, Johnson, um, she read this book and so it's so cool because I have her handwriting um her there but I have their handwriting in this book and their highlights and like notes so it's really interesting because it's almost like I'm reading this along with somebody else if that makes sense so it's really interesting and it's fun to see like sometimes we want to highlight the same things sometimes I want to highlight something different but this book is such a crazy book. All right, so back to what I was saying. I just picked it up. I had never read it before, but I've had it in my collection for freaking forever. When I say this is hands down my favorite book now, trigger warning, it is creepy. It is crazy. It makes you... It just makes you think completely different. I'm not going to give it away, all right? But it's about a man, and it's basically his train of thought. Um... He got into a horrible accident, I'm not going to explain how, but like on my life, you guys, he only has like a head. He lost his body, like I think he has his chest, but he has no legs, he has no arms, he can't see, he can't talk, um, but he can hear. And it's so crazy, you guys, because it's basically him and you get to live throughout his mind. And I couldn't put this book down, so I started this on the 26th and I finished it on the 3rd, so what? give or take the new year, probably didn't read it for a couple days, I finished this in probably two, three days, all right, I could not put this down, and, and Johnny, Johnny, um, I swear to you, old dude was calling my name from this book, like I said, he can't speak, so I swear on my life, I felt the energy of this man, and he was like, yo, can you please freaking read this book, don't give up on me, and I was reading it, and I was like, holy crap like I'm talking this thing went with me everywhere I went and I was just trying to finish it oh my goodness you guys this is such a good book so I'll just like read a little sentence inside his skull there was a normal man with arms and legs and everything that goes with them 
It was he, Joe, trapped in the darkness of his own skull, rushing frantically from ear hole to ear hole. Wherever in the skull there might be an opening, like a wild animal, he was trying to hammer his way out to escape into the world beyond. He was trapped in his own brain, tangled in the tissues and brain matter, kicking and groging and screaming to get out, and the only person in the world who could help him had no idea what he was doing. So, oh my god, it gives me the goosebumps. Sick. <laughs> you guys have to read this. And supposedly they turned it into a movie, but I kind of just want to have the feelings of like, yo, this is this book and me were just meant to be. Like, I was not supposed to give this away, and I swear to god, he was screaming internally to, to come and say, can you please read this? So... It gave me a whole new outlook on the it gave me a whole new outlook on life. It really really made me respect just just being alive. So um there's like I'll give you a little hint. There's this time where he's trying so badly to communicate with this lady, the nurse, right? He just wants like she, she he thinks she finally cracked the code by like tapping on his chest a certain way. Like it was it's such a crazy, crazy, crazy book. So I highly recommend this, you guys. It's Johnny Got His Gun by Dalton Trumbo. <sighs> Phenomenal. I can't even express how good that book is. All right, I just can't. So my next one, and I don't know why, but Akari's going through this new phase of where she just like wants to sneak in, steal my books, chew them up, and let it be. And I'm like, dude, what the heck are you doing? You have toys, you have bones. So this book, I want to enjoy this book so badly, but I cannot, and I think it's due to the way it was written. I don't know. Okay, so this is called A Girl is a Half-Formed Thing, and let's see who's by. See, I felt so bad because there was like a note, a really precious note written to whoever gifted this book to them. Um, but yeah, I got this at a little free library, I think, but... Uh, what the back says it's about is a little girl going through life with her little brother or older brother, I can't remember, having a brain tumor. But it starts out from her perspective inside of her mother's womb. So trust me, it's very interesting, don't get me wrong. But it's the way it's written, my brain breaks. It just shatters into a million pieces. And I would even like go forward and try to like see if it changed because I was wondering if it's written that way because it's from her perspective as a little girl. She's really young. I mean, when you're a baby, you don't even know how to talk yet. So I'm wondering if it's just her train of thoughts coming out. But I'll, I'll give you an example. All right, let me just open up to a random little page. It's, it's very short, short sentences. And I don't know why, but I just, my brain can't do it. So it says, a glass window, mommy, I want one. Don't get it on my floor. How will winter all through the night that year in the trees where we climbed on the hedges on the road. No cars here, no one comes. Things crying in the field for me. Say they want me and come down the walls for me. She's coming, mommy. Who? The banshee. Don't be silly. Sure, isn't your brother here? Won't he mind if... Won't he mind you if anything comes along? Should I close the door or leave it open? I don't know. Shut bad out or shut bad in? Worse you. And said they are coming. For you and me. Stop it. Coming for us and we're without a knife? What knife? The one that goes with the machi magic machine. What is that? Makes the noise for killing bad things. A big dark tunnel bangs. How do you know? That's what I had. Me shouting. It burns. Awful. Ah. The doctor said fire came out my eyes. He didn't. He did. And these aren't mine. They are mine. Mine melted. These are goats. Goat eyes and the devil wants them. My throat closing. Shut up. Ugh. Shut up. Mommy? But wakes me at night. Goat eyes riding off into the sky. So as my brain's trying to read this, I can't comprehend what I'm reading afterwards. I just, and it's so crazy because all um, like the review on the front is like, this is life changing and um, you got to read this and all that. And then I'm like reading it and I'm like, I can't. Even my first sentence I wrote down on my annotation, I was like, this is a little hard to read. Yeah, it's I, <laughs> it's really hard. So if you ever read this book, please let me know. Is it something I just got to push through? Will it be worth it in the end? Did you have a hard time too? But yeah, I don't know who this is, but I think it's McBride. Emer McBride. A girl is a half-formed thing. I want to read it so bad. I love the title. I was like, God, I just cannot get hooked onto it. My next book, another top favorite it might be under johnny got a gun i'm not sure a lot of these literally i was just like pfft, perfect so 
crazy story. I have this subscriber who subscribed to me. I'm, I'm sure she might still be subscribed to me, but I'm not too sure. I really hope she's just evolving and living life. Um, but her name went by Bobby Unlimited, and she was like one of the first girls I ever messaged back when you could still message people on YouTube. We would message each other all the time. Just just amazing energy, right? We, she would write me letters. Um, so yeah, this was years ago. She sent me this book, all right? And it's called Nausea by Jean Paul Sartre. Sartre? Another one Akari ate, so we start off on page 75. Luckily, I got to read up to page 75 before she ate it. But I was just like, dude, what the heck? So, this book, phenomenal, all right? Phenomenal. What's also a crazy story was when she first sent this to me in my P.O. box years ago, I lost the front cover. Oh, so that's when I finished it. So, I can't remember when I got this, like I said, years ago. I started trying to read it. I picked it up and I read the first couple pages and I put it down. I literally remember. I was like, I don't like this. It's kind of stupid. I don't know why. I can't remember what specifically made me put it down. But it just wasn't it. It was not, it was not a vibe. So, this book, absolutely amazing. So, it's called Nausea and it's basically you're reading a guy's journal. It says the dates. You go throughout his whole day with him. He tells you everything that he does. I've never felt so connected with somebody in my life. I was, I felt like I was reading my own thoughts. I literally felt like I wrote this book. I was like, what the heck? But it's basically this man just coming to terms with like existence and how nauseating that makes him feel. He's like, that's what he calls that feeling. He goes, there's a nausea, it's coming again. And it's just this, it is, it's this overwhelmed, well, overwhelming feeling of just being alive and understanding that some people don't see life that way, like they're just out there lollygagging, living life and whatnot. I did write down that there are some sensitive topics, so a trigger warning, just letting you know. I can't remember, I said page 146. There's So there's a couple sensitive topics, alright. One is about like a little girl and I, I, I don't like the way they described just it, I felt like that there were some parts that could have been left out don't get me wrong it made the book great creepy I'm, I'm stuck but I was just like I don't like it when I'm kind of like this while I'm reading like don't like I said I love creepy books I've read a lot of creepy books but there's some things that make me uncomfortable that I'm just like I would rather not read about this so there's one part about like a little girl who I think they're just talking about her deceased body and the second part is in the end sort of and it's where you find out one of the guys has been having feelings towards a little boy and that was also a little bit difficult for me to read but it's it's like reading somebody's diary you don't leave things out so if you you know if you wrote in your diary you're gonna say anything that comes to your mind so that's how I could relate to this one absolutely amazing I can read you some of the things that oh that was another one um, he, he talks about a relationship with a girl that he uh, sees here and there, so it's really interesting just to read from a man's perspective how they're kind of thinking and just noticing how much I can relate to it. Tuesday, nothing existed. Wednesday, there's a patch of sunlight on the paper tablecloth. In the patch of sunlight, a fly is dragging itself along, dazed, warming itself and rubbing its front legs against one another. I'm going to do it a favor by squishing it. It doesn't see this gigantic index finger looming up with the gold hair shining in the sun. Don't kill it, Monsieur, called the autodiadect. It bursts, its little white guts come out of its belly. I have relieved it of its existence. I say dryly to the autodiadect, I've done it a favor. Why am I here, and why shouldn't I be here? It is midday, I'm waiting for it to be time to sleep. Fortunately, sleep doesn't avoid me. In four days, I shall see Annie again. For the moment, that is my only reason for living. And afterwards, when Annie has left me, I know very well what I am secretly hoping. I'm hoping that she will never leave me again. Yet I ought to know that Annie will never agree to grow old in front of me. I am weak and lonely. I need her. I should have liked to see her again while I was strong. Annie has no pity for Floatsome. He belongs to no party because he doesn't want to betray humanity as a whole. But his sympathies go towards the humble. It is to the humble that he devotes his fine classical culture. I really, really highly recommend this book, you guys. Um, yeah, it, it was beautiful being able to go into this guy's head and just hear what life is like from that perspective. So my next book, I got this from, I got this a couple years ago. 
but this is called The End of Nature by Bill McKibben. This is a great, great book. It's all about how the, basically the, it's been the end of nature. What we now see is a, basically an effect of what humans have done. It's not mother nature acting innately anymore and it's really crazy to read. Re really amazing. Um, I'll read you a little bit. Okay, so this says, what mattered most to me was that for the very first time, human beings have become so large that they altered everything around us, that we had ended nature as its independent force, that our appetites and habits and desires could now be read in every cubic meter of air, on every increment on the thermometer. This doesn't make the consequences of global warming any worse in a particular sense. Of course, we'd be in... We'd be in as tough a spot if the temperature was going up for entirely natural reasons. But to me, it made the historical moment entirely different from any other, filled with implications for our philosophy, our theology, our sense of self. We are no longer able to think of ourselves as a species tossed about by larger forces. We are now those larger forces. Hurricanes and thunderstorms and tornadoes become not acts of God, but acts of man. And that is what I mean by the end of nature. This is, a, this is a wonderful book if you want to just get up to date with some of the crap that's been going on. I swear I may have already recommended this book to you guys when I um, recommended you guys news from nowhere, or at least I made that little video about it. If I didn't, I apologize, but I know how difficult it is to trust the media, to trust whatever the narrative is telling you. So it's it's wonderful to have a book that actually puts down some statistics, some facts, some, some information as opposed to just saying, oh my god, the weather's hot today, what are we going to do? Climate crisis. You know, it's actually like, <clears throat> it gives the bigger picture behind what scientists are warning about or what's like really going on. So I highly, highly recommend this, you guys. It is a little bit saddening, but it almost makes you appreciate nature a lot more and want to, you know, leave less of a footprint yourself. Kind of just be one with nature and not the bigger force controlling it, if that makes sense. This next book. <sighs> Stunning. Stunning. So actually, alright, so I'm gonna go with the one I read first. So, I have had this book for a while too. It was gifted to me by a wonderful subscriber of mine named Tiffany Brooks. If you happen to be watching this, I hope you are doing well and I'm sending you so much positive energy. I hope you are creating and painting and just living your best life. So this is called The Warrior of Light by Paolo Coelho. Um, she was amazing and I don't know if you can see but underneath my balance thing there's like a little box. She gave me like the, a collection of some of his best books. Uh, Paolo Coelho. This was one of them and it just so happened that I only have like, I think I have one more book I need to finish out of the collection. It came with like The Alchemist, uh, I can't remember the other ones. But, um, I had just finished, what the hell is it called? I just finished Nausea and I was literally in a reading spell. I was like, I, I need to keep reading. So I just went to the bookshelf, I grabbed this and was like, alright, looks like this is what I'm going to read today. So at first picking this up, I didn't know that it was more, it's more of a manual, if that makes sense. Oh, look, how cute. But it's more of a manual in this sense. So it's not necessarily a story, per se, but um, it's a book titled Short Notes on Accepting Failure, Embracing Life, and Rising to Your Destiny. It is called Warrior of the Light, a manual. You guys have no idea how uplifting and powerful this is. I don't know how he is able to come up with such monumental sentences. You know what I mean? Like some people have to give a whole speech, a whole a whole theatrical speech for an hour for you to be like, oh wow, I feel good. This dude can write like five sentences and you're just like, all right, shit, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I got it. So what I did was I wrote down, as I was reading this, I wrote down some of my absolute favorite points that they made because I knew I wanted to share this book with you guys. And as opposed to trying to summarize it, sometimes I'm not that good at that, I could just read quotation marks. And as, as opposed to like skimming through this and be like, oh, wait, wait, what should I read you guys? Um, I wrote some things down, so I really hope that this inspires you to get this book. It's also one of those books where you don't have to pay attention to the characters necessarily. There's like two characters in the whole book, but um, it's mostly just a manual. It's great. Like they said, it's short notes on embracing life. So I'm going to read you some of the really important things that I liked. A thorn, however tiny, can cause the traveler to halt. A tiny invisible cell can destroy a healthy human organism. The memory of a past moment of fear allows cowardice to reborn with each to be reborn within each new morning. A fraction of a second opens the way for the enemy's fatal blow. 
He knows how to deal with the situation better. Why? Because he uses fear as an engine, not a brake. For the warrior, there's no such thing as impossible love. The warrior takes stock of his life. He makes sure that his sword is sharp, his heart is satisfied, that his faith still burns in his soul. He knows that maintenance is as important as action. A responsible warrior is not someone who takes the weight of the world on their shoulders, but someone who has learned to deal with the challenges of the moment. A warrior does not try to appear one way or the other. He simply is. The act of surrender forces the warrior to stop asking foolish questions and helps him to overcome his feelings of guilt. A warrior is as wise as a serpent and as innocent as a dove. When the moment for combat, when the moment for combat approaches, the warrior of the light is prepared for all eventualities. Concentrate and disperse your energies according to the situation. Yes, life is insane, but the great wisdom of the warrior lies in choosing his insanity wisely. He celebrates yesterday's victories in order to gain more strength for tomorrow's battles. The world is, after all, doing its best to help him, even though everything around him seems to be saying the opposite. The warrior smiles, but he does not try to feel things that he no longer feels. He is changing, and he wants his feelings to keep pace with him. And my absolute favorite one is... He never says yes with his lips if in his heart he is saying no. That last one is my absolute favorite. He never says yes with his lips if in his heart he is saying no. So this book is amazing. Like I said, it's just short little snippets, short little like quotes or messages. That is truly inspiring. Anytime I picked up this book, I was kind of scared because I knew I would finish it in one day. So I kind of like eased it out and just read a few pages here, a few pages there. If I went to a lake, I brought it. I would love to read it in nature. So I highly recommend this book, okay? Highly recommend it. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. So what's even more crazy is after I finished Warrior of Light, I was like, why not just go over to my stack and pick another one of those books? So I, I hope I pronounced this right, but this book is called The Volk The Volkries, and it's also by Paulo Coelho. Phenomenal, you guys. This 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 man is an amazing, amazing writer. So I don't want to give this whole book away at all because it's freaking amazing. But basically what it's about is it's him, first person, Paulo Coelho and his wife. And he has, something's calling him to the desert, all right? And he wants to go find his, his self. He wants to find his inner, his inner him, right? It's their lovely journey together through the desert, what they, um, what they learn, what they're taught, the people that they run into, it's just amazing. They run into this group of women who live in the desert and they're named the Volkries. So crazy, so inspiring. You gotta love it. Something that I really, really liked about this book was that in the end, he talks about how he learned because he kind of falls, like he's married, right? But he has an attraction towards one of the women that he meets in the desert. He can't help it, poor guy. <laughs> poor little thing. And so it, it's basically he opens up about how he's feeling in his own thoughts and he learned that there's a difference between being infatuated by somebody and being in love. And I guess I'd never really heard it be put that way where he realized that he was madly in love with his wife. He would never do anything other than want to be with her, but he found himself being infatuated. And it wasn't like he was necessarily getting on himself, like being hard on himself because he was having feelings towards this woman, but it was the awareness and his understanding and sharing that and kind of being open. I, th I think that's amazing. I personally know for a fact that there's probably so, men out so many men and women too, but there's probably a lot of men who are extremely infatuated with other women and are confused with the fact that how can I be infatuated with this one woman when I love this woman? Like, I'm sure that's a conundrum in itself, but I think it's amazing that they were kind of open enough to share that with a huge broad audience and just say, hey, this was my little journey that I had into the desert. This is what happened. My wife was there like the whole time. So interesting, you guys. Such a beautiful, beautiful story. And it says, angels are love in motion. They never rest. They struggle to grow and they are beyond good and evil. And then it says, let's be silent for a while so that our angels can hear the love that exists beyond our silence. And they go, why do we need to speak with our angels? Chris asked, breaking the silence. To discover through them, replied Jean. They go in to say that if you have like a mentor or a spiritual teacher, it's like against the universe for another spiritual teacher to teach you. So it was also interesting that although he had his own spiritual teacher, pa pa Paolo, 
Um, his wife didn't so there were other people that he ran into and he was able to just listen to the conversations that his wife was having and learn other things through that too without that teacher being the one really teaching him if that makes sense you still have so many opportunities to, to, to sit be quiet listen and you know see what resonates with you even though the message may have not been directed towards you I thought this book was so amazing very 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 easy and fast read um, let's see I read it in a day. So I started at 8.30 on December 8th, and I finished at 9.20 the next morning. So, yeah. I thought it was so amazing. And if you guys know me, they, like, bring up some conspiracy theory stuff, too. Not, like, necessarily that, but that reminds me. It's kind of him coming to terms also with the fact that he thinks differently and is into weird stuff. And the fact that his wife is okay with him still exploring himself and going on these journeys and being by her side... I thought it was just awesome, though, to, like, connect with him on that aspect, where he's into weird thoughts and conspiracies, and he brings up, like, the Jesuits and secret societies and stuff like that. And how he feels crazy when he brings up stuff like that, but there's other people out there that, that do resonate and kind of are into the same thing as well. So I just thought that was really cool. And what's also really, really interesting was that they bring up the being a warrior of light in this book so i was like holy crap like how cool is this that i just finished the warrior of light and then i pick up this and it just gave me a little message that like girl you're on you're on the right track keep reading keep exploring keep your mind open and another thing i really enjoyed about this is that this was um a story with like a plot if that makes sense this wasn't just an informative book to where you can like pick up wherever and just get some facts i have a hard time following books like this where there's a character in a story and i'm like you know, following that stuff, it has to be really creepy or like weird, you know, and this wasn't, this was cool, it was magical, it was inspiring, beautiful, and like I said, it was a really fast and easy read, so I highly recommend this, I would definitely recommend, like, you can read both of these books, or you don't have to, but it was really fun reading this book after that, because I was kind of like, no, I've already went through my training course, my mini training course of being a warrior of light, I know what he's talking about, so it was just kind of funny. Okay, my next book, this is another book that I can't freaking get, I can't connect to it. I just don't like it. I've had it for forever. I don't remember uh, what year I got this, but I remember it was just on a list of books that if you're into weird crap, weird books, read it. But it's not that weird in my opinion. And like I said, maybe I just need to like stick through and read it. But for one, it's a pretty thick book, right? So if... If I'm, if I'm going to read over 400 pages of something, I better like it. <laughs> so this is called The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test by Tom Wolfe. I, you know me, some of the times I don't like to read the summary of the book or the back of the book because then I feel like my mind just does its own, its own puzzle piece of solving the problem and I think I already know what the whole book is about. And I don't feel as like ooh, what's going to happen next? I'm like, oh, I already know she lives in Texas. She's going to be getting this, and she meets a husband, and they live on a farm. You know, I'm not really waiting for all the in-between stuff. So I don't know what this book is supposed to be about. <laughs> From the first couple pages that I did read, it's about this guy who is in jail or prison because he was, like, selling LSD. He was, like, one of the biggest known drug, drug producers or suppliers, whatever you would call him. But he got locked up, so this guy is, like, on this little adventure to go find him. He wants to talk to him because now this guy is trying to say that people need to move past acid, move past this LSD, thinking they're on top of the world thing. So don't get me wrong. The, like, I, it's interesting, but I'm not gonna lie. It's almost, like, a little bit too masculine for me. You know, they're, they're talking about, like, drugs and prison and all the boys are getting together and then they go meet up with the other boys and, you know, so... I, it's not that I don't recommend this book, it's just I seriously could not get connected to it. I want to so badly, it looks so funny, and I bet you it's a, it's a trip to read, but I'm just like, god damn. Yeah, so, if you guys have read this, or have heard reviews on it, or like, girl, just give it a try, let me know. Or maybe, like, I can influence you, if you're into, like, funny, goofy books, I don't know if this is funny or goofy, so watch me get this and be like, that's about a whole murder case, but... Yeah, I just couldn't, I couldn't get connected with this one, so I, I had to put that one down, but I still wanted to share it with you guys. So, lastly, this. So, I wrote in the beginning not sure where I got this from. I was going to give it away. I decided to pick it back up and give it another chance. Wasn't feeling the other book I started. I just finished Johnny Got His Gun. I said, I started this January 6th during the panty. I can't say that word. 
I said I finished this book. I love it. It's crazy how this is depicting the current world of 2022. So this book, I, I told you, it's been two years since I've read it. Absolutely amazing. I swear I got this um, in the same time period of like the Kool-Aid acid test and Johnny got his gun because I was just trying to find as many weird books as I could. So that book is freaking amazing. I'm not going to give it away, but it's basically about this guy who is like, he's a scientist and he's trying to like come up with something right and he realizes that what he made need like how do you say like it's not it, i can't remember if it's not allowed if it's forbidden or if it was just like he can't let people know about this they asked him to destroy it it's something along those lines right he couldn't part with the fact that he spent so much time energy and dedication into this i can't remember what the heck it is but it's this substance, and he decides to inject himself with it. So it's basically about what happens after he injects himself. Let's see. Good. I'll need a lab, and I'll need to use BK Pharmax Private Strip. When I leave my plane, I must be placed in an isolation suit and a sealed, and in a sealed biologics transport truck immediately. Then my aircraft will be destroyed on the runway and the entire area sprayed with disinfectant foam. I will be your guest, if you can call it that, indefinitely. The lab should be equipped so that I can live there and do my work. I will require a computer terminal with full services. You are seldom a drunkard, Michael, and you have never been unstable. Not in our time together. This sounds quite serious. Are we talking about a fire, Michael? A vat spill, perhaps? Bernard wondered how Paulson had found out he was working with gene engineering. Or did he know? Or was he just guessing? A very extreme emergency will all be explained? Yes, and it will be to your advantage and your nation's advantage to know ahead of time. So hear me out, right? So will it be explained? Yes, and it will be to your advantage and your nation's advantage to know ahead of time. It does not sound trivial, Michael. He felt an irrational sense of anger. Compared to this, everything else is trivial, Paul. Then it will be done. We can expect you within 24 hours. Thank you. He hung up and glanced at his watch. He doubted if anyone at Jintron understood the magnitude of what was about to happen. It was difficult for him to imagine, but one thing was clear. With 48 hours of Harrison informing the CDC, the North American continent would now be placed under virtual isolation. Whether officials believed what was said or not, the key words would be plague and genetic engineering firm. The action would be completely justifiable, but he doubted if it would be sufficient. The more the drastic measures would be taken. He did not want to be on the continent when this happened, but on the other hand, he did not want to be responsible for transmitting the contagion. He, so he would offer himself up as a specimen to be kept at the first pharmaceutical research firm in Europe. All right, so that's what this freaking book is about. It's this guy and he injects himself with something and then realizes like, yo, maybe I shouldn't do that. It is crazy. I highly recommend it, especially because the world's weird. Who knows what's gonna happen this year, but Reading that during the whole, like, real kickoff of when the world was being flipped upside down, it's just crazy because I know it's not the same thing, but there's so many books out there, like, especially sci-fi books, that predictively, uh, that are predictively programming people to be ready for when this, like, a big plague or a contagion breaks out or being isolated. I just find it so, so, so weird. Um, like, you know, 1984 by, like, George or Orwin or whatever, supposedly that dude was, that dude's, like, a little bit deeper into the game than we think about, and he wrote that book as, like, an early warning, something along those lines. Like, I have heard stories and theories that certain authors aren't really authors, but that books are written, and they basically expose stuff, like, I don't know. You guys remember that one book that literally cannot be found anymore because it was talking about literally something happening in a Wuhan lab and it was just like a little sci-fi book from years and years ago but it literally depicted everything that was happening in our present future so that's another reason why I love reading interesting books is because sometimes I feel like you're just reading what's happening in real life Blood Music by Greg Bear talks about genetic engineering and then listen to this it says Virgil's heavy black eyebrows arched and drew together behind the thick rims of his glasses he smiled, revealing teeth spotted brown from the childhood of drinking naturally fluoridated water. I have brown spots on my teeth. That is so funny, but it's a great book. I love the way it was written. Wonderful, wonderfully written. Has you on your toes completely. And yeah, if you're into like weird, like sciencey, creepy crap, that book is great. Like I said, another one of the books I'm surprised that I enjoyed so much because there are characters that you have to follow and like all this and that and the other. 
but that book is creepy. Like I said, I don't want to give it all away besides the fact that old dude literally injects himself with something and as you heard, he's like, I gotta be isolated from everybody. I need to be put in a lab and I need to be like under severe supervision. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really cool book. I, I wish they would make a movie out of it. I might have to read it again because I, I, really, I really enjoyed it, but I don't freaking remember it as well as I would like to. So that sums up our little book video for today. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this, uh, liked listening to some of the books. Maybe you have some that you want to jot down. Um, I would really love for you guys to share any book recommendations that you have in the comments, and maybe I can read them, get my hands on them, and talk about them in my next video. And if not, you already know me, I will have some more books for you guys here soon to review. Alright? So, I hope that you guys are having a wonderful day. Please don't forget to drink water, eat some food, get some sunlight. And just be nice to yourself. Um, alrighty. I will see you on the flip side.